Let's go. Trample on snakes. Cause when it all begins, my eyes on the prize, so it's on again. I refuse to lose, I ain't gonna pretend. I thought I told you I was born to win. middle seat of the back row of my classroom. This is their view of the board. Um, so I'm just wondering, when we ordered this five million dollars worth of plexiglass, did we have a classroom of 28 desks set up to where school board members could sit in them and see what this was really going to be like? Because I'm still trying to figure out how in between my classes am I supposed to disinfect? How am I supposed to hear my students when they're in the back of the room wearing a mask behind all this plexiglass? How my students are going to be able to see my board or see me? I guess I'll have to stand at the end of rows instead of at the board to try and work out problems or whatever. Um, but I really just need to know. It was 10 years ago just after the government instituted the whole isolation policy. We began hearing reports of a mass epidemic, some unknown disease sweeping the country. The details were vague at first, nothing on the cause or transmission of the disease, only that it was highly contagious, and in most cases, fatal. Before the general public even had time to react, the government declared a state of emergency and ordered a mandatory vaccination program for our protection, they said. As it turns out, that was the beginning of our nightmare. The disease was a complete government fabrication, and the supposed vaccine they were injecting into everyone? In reality, it was a cyber virus developed by Daiwa. The virus has a mutating effect on the cells of the body. It alters their molecular structure and converts them into biometal essentially turning us into machines from the inside out. There's no way to stop it. And to make things worse, 
The cyber virus was still early in its experimental phase. What do you mean? Daiwa didn't even know if it would work. It had never been tested on a large scale. So they turned Japan into their own private laboratory. When it does work, the virus gradually progresses through the body until it finally reaches the brain. At that point, we become perfect androids under Daiwa's control. The speed of the process differs from person to person. So let's begin with CNN senior medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen on these new homegrown variants that scientists are discovering. Elizabeth, good morning to you. What more can you tell us about them? They have very cleverly named this data after birds. And you know, the variants are named after birds. And you'll see that in a second. The reason they do that is because when you say the UK variant or the South African variant, there are concerns it could stigmatize those areas as if somehow they did something wrong. So instead they name them after birds. So they only things we're insulting here are birds and hopefully the birds won't mind. So there are seven variants that they found in seven different parts of the United States. And so if we look at the larger ones, they called it Robin 1. They found it in 30 states, predominantly in the Midwest. Robin 2, 20 states, predominantly in the Southeast, very similar to Robin 1. And then you can see Pelican, 13 states, plus um, Australia, Denmark, Switzerland, and India. And then there were four where they found far fewer cases, but worth noting. Yellowhammer, mostly in the southeast, Bluebird, mostly in the northeast, Quail, mostly in the southwest and northeast, and Mockingbird, mostly in south central and the east coast. So that is really good news. Fiona? Well, that is very reassuring, Elizabeth Cohen, and, and nothing against birds, but it is more palatable to name this after birds rather than countries, which is why yes. we don't call it the China virus or the Wuhan virus as it had been labeled by the right. Trump administration. Do you think we'll ever get back to the old normal or is the new normal the new normal? Forever, forever, forever. I would encourage you to not think about the words getting back to normal, right? We all lost something, but we might be gaining other things and creativity and resilience. And so I think that looking back is not productive and it's a waste of time and you miss the present when you do that. Forever. It's a sentiment we can all relate to. And when the day-to-day -day can feel panicked and paralyzing, Dr. Ashton has a prescription. Embrace this new normal. Embrace this new normal. Embrace this new normal. Embrace this new normal. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. I mean, no one has a crystal ball, but certainly this pandemic in the last year has taught us that it's not going away. It's not going away. That paradigm shift is what she talks about in her new book, aptly named The New Normal. Yeah, I am scared of COVID. We know masks are a must, but they can also be really annoying, even painful, especially around your ears. We've been seeing that a lot of us are feeling a little bit of pain behind our ear from the loops of the mask. Lifestyle expert Christine Bibbo Her says you're gonna love these easy hacks. So this first hack, I took it right from my closet. My favorite earmuffs, you just attach the ear loop right over the fluffy part of the earmuff. If you have an old long sleeve t-shirt, cut off the sleeves and pull the loops through each end. Then tie it in the back and you're good to go. Many people have been wearing masks for nearly a year, so it may be time to give your ears a little break. Comfy and cute. Getting the vaccine is required. At this time, your employment will be terminated. More than a month and a half into the nation's vaccination rollout, roughly one in three Americans still say they probably won't get the shot. This is according to a poll from the Associated Press in which many people express doubts about safety and effectiveness. Now, among those waiting for more research, a former waitress from Brooklyn who says that her uncertainty cost her her job. A part of America's tapestry that you've likely never heard of, Black American Sign Language. It's a unique form of sign language that's drawn new attention as the nation's so-called racial reckoning sheds light on how deaf black Americans communicate in a language that's all their own. 
Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. From the footsteps of Martin Luther King Jr. at the Lincoln Memorial. Make you think these restrictions will have to be in place for quite a lot longer than intended? Well, actually, it's too early to say. Um, this, uh, the dynamic is uh, slowing down. What we see, we still have an increase, yes, but uh, a very lower one, very much lower one than we have seen the past days, last week, for example. And what we have to see, we need, we need patience. Trample on snakes. Something like a doctor, because I got patience. I'm <laughs> I'm Soll ich ihm aufhelfen? Soll ich ihm aufhelfen? Buckflow with the speed of a bobsled Bus led to the head Plus I stay red Every time I think about the dead I think about what Machiavelli said Fight for the ones who bled And this MC shit We agree shit got out of hand But they ain't stopped the plan Unaffected No respect for this but my perspective is Those who walk the path of the straight and narrow can rule the land like Pharaoh, plus enjoy the bones of the marrow. <laughs> she tackles racism through comedy. She's the only black woman comedian in Calgary, and she's also the president of Black Lives Matter in that city. Adora Wolford joins us live this morning to talk comedy, activism, racism, and how all of these things intersect in her world. Good morning, Adora. How are you? Large protests have broken out in Spain over the jailing of Catalan rapper Pablo Hassel for slandering the crown and glorifying terrorism. Hundreds of celebrities have spoken out in support of the artist, while Amnesty International described his arrest as an excessive restriction on his freedom of expression. Heavy clashes erupted in Catalonia as Hassel was arrested in his hometown of Lleida. People are starting to, like, they already started to protest yesterday. This new normal forever. Well, there's just thousands of service members who are opting to not take the vaccine or saying they want to wait because uh, many of them believe that they don't need it, that uh, they feel they've had COVID or friends have had COVID and it wasn't bad, or they're very worried about the vaccine itself. The interesting thing is in the military, normally these service members are used to following orders. But in this case, they have a choice because the vaccine is not yet fully approved by the FDA, so it's voluntary for them. To influence them in order to take the vaccine, military leaders have done all kinds of things. They've put out videos. They've taken pictures of themselves getting shots. They send out notices. They just have this urgent plea, please take the vaccine. It is improving as time goes on. Several senior leaders have said that they expect that this vaccine is going to be mandatory and at that point they're just not going to have a choice. That this vaccine is going to be mandatory and this vaccine is going to be mandatory and this vaccine is going to be mandatory and at that point they're just not going to have a choice. This vaccine is going to be mandatory and they're just not going to have a choice. At this time, your employment will be terminated. What if that return was dictated by the vaccine? Put another way, can your boss force you to take it? Arguably, yes. Your employer can likely mandate all employees get the shot. Employees who work for private employers are employed at will in the United States, which means I can terminate you for good cause, bad cause, or no cause, 
at any time. And so if you don't cooperate with me and you don't have a religious issue, you don't have a Disabilities Act issue, and you don't come under some state law, I can terminate you. I can terminate you if you're not willing to have the vaccine or to come to work where you're getting tested. I think the right thing to do, uh, without question, is to make the vaccine mandatory. I think the right thing to do, uh, without question, is to make the vaccine mandatory. I think the right thing to do, uh, without question, is to make the vaccine mandatory. And what I hope is that there are a coalition uh, of like-minded companies that will do the same thing. And while more companies and small businesses are opting for rewarding or encouraging their workforce to get vaccinated, if your boss does make it mandatory, you may be left without a choice. I can terminate you. At this time, your employment will be terminated. Exterminate. <laughs> exterminate. Exterminate. You are our prisoners. <laughs> Thank you. Um, they are watching as others get the vaccine, and they would like to know when will kids be able to get the vaccine? Well, first of all, honey, what was your first name? Layla. Layla, Layla beautiful name. First of all, kids don't get the vaccine, get COVID. Kids don't get the vaccine, get COVID. Kids don't get the vaccine, get COVID very often. It's un unusual for that to happen. Hey there, people on trample on snakes. I can take about an hour on the Tower of Power. 1973. It's not some science fantasy effect from 2001. This electronic display emanating from Australia's largest computer is a picture of the condition past, present and future of planet Earth. The program was originally devised by a scientist working from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jay Forrester. It was developed under the auspices of the Club of Rome by an MIT research team to present a complex model of the world and what we humans are doing to it. The program, called World One, doesn't pretend to be a precise forecast. What it does for the first time in man's history on the planet is to look at the world as one system. It shows that Earth cannot sustain present population and industrial growth for much more than a few decades. It shows that simply cleaning up our car exhausts and making some small effort to limit our families simply isn't enough. It's like an electronic guided tour of our global behaviour since 1900 and where that behaviour will lead us. Well, this is the printed version of what we've just seen on the television screen. And what looks at first to be just a maze of computer characteristics is really a system of very simple graphs which project what's going to happen to the planet over the next 150 years if we don't do something drastic to stop it. Down the left-hand side of the graph is the date, 1900, 1940, 1980, 2020, right down to 2060. Now, each of these lines of, of letters represents a curve showing some aspect of the condition of the planet. The further out this way they go, the greater that figure is, the further this way, uh, the less. For example, P represents population. So here it is at 1900 and then it comes up to 1940, it starts to take off. Here we are at 1980, up to the turn of the century, and then it starts to peter off. Let's now have a look at this next curve, the Q curve, which is the quality of life. And this is represented by, for example, the amount of space people have, the uh, amount of money they have to spend, the amount of food they have to eat. Now, it increases rapidly up to 1940, but from 1940 on, the quality of life diminishes. And here we are about the turn of the century and we come up to the year 2020 and it's really come right back. More people of course means that you 
start to chew up your supply of natural resources. And this is this curve here, the N curve. And it shows that slowly but steadily, the pool of natural wealth in the world, natural resources, minerals, oil and so on, is slowly but steadily diminishing. So this is the situation. As population increases, the quality of life decreases, and the supply of natural resources decreases. But have a look at this curve here. This is called the Z curve, and it represents pop uh, pollution. Now, predictably enough, as the population increases up to 1980, pollution increases. There's more rubbish. But from 1980 to the year 2020, pollution really takes off. This is assuming, of course, that we don't do anything about it. So the year 2020, the condition of the planet be starts to become highly critical. And if we don't do anything about it, this is what's going to happen. The quality of life is going to go right back to practically zero. Pollution is going to become so serious, right out here, that it will start to kill people. So the population will diminish. Right back here, less than it was in the year 1900. And at this stage, round about the year 2040, 2050, civilized life as we know it on this planet will cease to exist. All the haters used to say, boo, we hate him. I want to thank y'all for the inspiration. <laughs>